This is a letter to Sonia Waller. Dear Sonia, I've been listening to the phone calls from prison for the past few months, and this is my letter to you. Dear Sonia, as I've listened to the phone calls between you and Ernest, I have some thoughts in my head as to who you are, but only you and those who really know you know who you are. I don't know. It's just when I listen to the phone calls and I realize in the very beginning, I thought seriously you were in your 20s listening to the phone. You know, you don't know how someone looks just by their voice. But the conversation that you carried, I was for sure that you were a young 20 something year old tenderoni that Mr. Ernest was talking to or came in contact with. It was actually a shock to me, Sonia, that you were like 54, 55. I could not believe it because of the level of the conversation there wasn't any substance to it, in my opinion. Not throwing shots at you or jabs or anything. It was just kind of infantile. And most of the conversation was about how everybody else was setting somebody else up. But I digress. Sonia, you are a big grown woman. And that's what I thought. I was like, wow, she's a mature woman, you know? with grandchildren. You know, I listen to some of the phone calls and, you know, and all we can do is ascertain and get a little glimmer, glean what we can from the phone calls. And what I was able to ascertain was you've been through some things. You sure have been through some things. I mean, everything from getting shot Back in the 90s, I was like, what was going on? To having parts of your intestines pulled out, surgically removed? That must have been very traumatic. Thank God you're still here. That's for sure, because that's traumatizing, especially when it's happening to you, not knowing whether you're going to live or, you know, live or die. You've been to, I think it sounds like from one of the calls, if I remember correctly, that you were in prison at one point in time. So I don't know. I know on one of the other calls that I've listened to, you said that Mr. Williams, Ernest Williams, he knows the people that you talk to and you run with. So I guess you guys know each other. Um, and the circles and the people that you, you deal with. So my question is, you know, it's been said you've known Ernest for two, three years, but I have questions as to whether you've known him even longer. And my other question is, what was your end goal? Um, I don't profess to be an angel because I've done some things in my life but it comes a point in time when we mature and we get older and we understand that every action is a reaction everything we do there's a consequence to it did you not think Sonia it might have been inappropriate to have those conversations with someone that was married Maybe you didn't even think about it. Maybe you didn't care. Did you ever think that his wife, Shirley, would ever hear those phone calls and how it would make her feel? Probably not. But I just, this, this nagging thing about this whole situation, Sonia. You know, you seem like you've led a very colorful life. 
You know, it seems like, you know, my son will tell me I'm not about that life, but it seems like you are. And there's just some things in my mind and in my gut that tells me there's more to this than what we're hearing. Actually, I listened to some phone calls today. And Sonia, I think you're the coach. I think you're the coach that Ernest and his friend is talking about. You're the coach. But my question is, why are you so vested in this man's life? For somebody that you've only known for two years or three, why are you so vested? I mean, myself personally, if I met someone and, you know, just in passing and it was so casual and, you know, you said that you guys are just friends and there's nothing intimate that's gone on and I heard that they got locked up I'd be like well I hope it gets out and I move on with my life but here you are you're on Tasha K and I really think you have been advocating for him um, but it's like what why are you going so hard you know, typically I would see a wife going hard and Shirley ain't even going that hard. So my question, Sonia, is why are you going so hard for someone that you just met? I think you mentioned maybe two years or three years ago. It just doesn't make sense. I wonder if you, you know, like I said, Sonia, we don't know you. We only know what we hear from these phone calls. You know, that's all we know. And what might be in documents, you know, that might be floating around the internet. But that's about all that we know. But I will say this. There's nothing good that can come, nothing, from dealing with a man that's married. Nothing. Actually, if there is a covenant, because there's still some questions as to whether or not, you know, no one has found a marriage certificate for Mr. Ernesto Williams and Shirley Strawberry. And, you know, he's been married before, and it's alleged that, you know, one of his wives, he finally had a uh, divorce, was, you know, he was divorced from her after he was married to Shirley Strawberry. So there's a lot of questions about that, but I guess that's neither here nor there. But why are you so vested? And Coach Sonia, I think you have been working on this interview with Shirley Strawberry. I mean, with Tasha K. Forgive me. <laughs> and um, I think you thought going to a huge platform was going to be better for you let's not forget yourself for you and for Mr. Williams but I don't think it went so well Sonia I don't think you researched exactly who Tasha K is um, her history with SA her history um, and just how she um, feels about that, <clears throat> her being a survivor, whether or not those accusations and allegations are true um, with Mr. Williams. I don't think you did your research. I think personally you would have done better going to a smaller blogger of someone who had a smaller platform, but now 
I don't know. Did you consider the fact that he's still in prison and his lawyers? Did you guys get permission to do this interview? Those are my questions. I have some questions about that, sis. Did you get permission to, from his attorney? Did his attorney know that you were doing this interview? Um, but it does appear that you were able to plan this and get this interview done. But I think you forgot that the phone calls from prison, many people have listened to those calls and have dissected them down to every iota and every word that was spoken. I don't know. I think, Sonia, you said you wanted to help Ernest, but I think in this situation, you might have hurt him more and you helped him. Dear Sonia, I'm wondering, just with your background and some of the traumas and things, you know, we only get a little glimpse of what has gone on in your life, but it seems like, like I said, my first, when I first heard the phone calls, I thought you were 20 some odd years old. And now thinking about it, that you're 54, 55, a mature woman, in age, the conversation sounded so minuscule. There was no substance to it. I thought I was actually listening to somebody who was in their late teens or early 20s and that's not to dish you but all i could hear was the voice <clears throat> i was one of the people who didn't know who you were i wasn't going digging i'm just out here listening and seriously i thought you were in your 20s just based on a conversation there wasn't any real, in my mind, a conversation that a 54-year-old would be having. But I digress. A 54-year-old woman would be having. I don't know. That's just me. So, Sonia, I just want to know what your end game is with all of this said you have a YouTube channel and you know you're working I don't know if this is true or not but I hear at strip clubs and you know you're working at bars and I guess you know people have to work you know and earn a living but working at strip clubs and bars sometimes comes with a certain element of people you know what I mean? And a certain crowd and a certain crew and a certain tribe. And uh, you mentioned in one of the calls that Ernest knows the people that you deal with. So it sounds like y'all run in the same circles. You know what I mean? What was your end game with all of this? You know? Because I remember a phone call specifically talking about when he, I, there was a phone call, and I can't remember, maybe three, four weeks ago, about, and, and I, I can't quote it specifically, but I think Ernest was saying something about when he got out, that he would be with you. I'm trying to paraphrase, so don't, don't get on me <laughs> about the specifics, but it was almost a phone call that I remember him saying that when he got out, you know, he was going to be with you and he could give you a good 20 some years. What, what was Shirley not supposed to be in the picture? I mean, was there plans not for her to be involved in the picture? 
What, what was the plan? See, I start looking at the situation and I, you know, people plotting scheme. I'm not saying you was plotting a scheme and uh, Ernest was plotting a scheme, but it sounds to me like, you know, y'all were making plans to try to be together. Allegedly. I don't know. And uh, there's some phone calls out there like that. I remember that phone call vividly. And I remember him saying something about, a, you know, we could be, something about being together for the next 20 some years. And you were so giggly and so enthralled. And you seemed like you were just head over heels about that, Sonia. I'm wondering what your childhood was like. You know, because sometimes, a lot of times, our childhood dictates a lot of what we do, how we behave, our childhood traumas. But you've had some adult traumas just getting, you know, you know, having to go to a hospital because you were shot at. I'm wondering what the circumstances were behind that. And did you heal? I'm sure you healed physically, but did you heal mentally? I don't know. So, Sonia, we're going to continue to listen to the phone calls and dissect the phone calls. I know I will continue to listen because it's almost like you get a bird's eye view and it's like you're a fly on the wall. And people are talking freely when they don't know that the calls were going to be listened to. And you get a chance to learn how people think behind closed doors. I know any of us who've had relatives who were incarcerated, if we go and request those phone calls, we'd probably be shocked as to what some of these people have said about us. <laughs> And su surprised at who some of the people that they talk to. So, Sonia, I just wanted to know what your end game was in all of this. And why were you so vested? Those are the questions that I have for you, Sonia. And how do you plan? You know, you come across to me the type of woman that really doesn't care about much of anything. That's just my opinion. That you're about that life and you can thug it out, as we say. That's just my opinion as to who you are. But again, I really don't know, you know, you personally, just based on the interview with Tasha Kay and the phone calls, you know, but you have to remember that those phone calls are out there and people are going to have their opinions. But why? I know me personally, somebody that I'm not romantically linked with or, you know, having relations with or, you know, somebody who really didn't matter. Uh, I wouldn't be going so hard. And yes, you can love anybody. But quite frankly, I've never really told any, you know, my sons, my husband, when I was dating some folks, very frequent, very infrequently do I throw the word I love you around. It just doesn't match up. Well, it seems like the, in my opinion, you know. If Ernesto was to get out, that you and him were going to possibly ride off into the sunset and was surely supposed to be around? What, what was the plan? Does it sound like there was a plan? But anyway, that's just my opinion. I don't just look at the surface. I'm looking at the conversations. Where was Shirley supposed to go? Where was she supposed to be? When Ernesto got out, 
and he said he had another 20 some years so he's figuring you know he's 50 something he'll be around for another 20 some years 70 80 some years old that's what i got from it i could be mistaken but i don't think i am you know sonia again i was shocked when i found out that you were in your 50s, I literally thought he was talking to a young Tenderoni. The conversation was so, it was so not going anywhere. So, I just want to know, how do you feel now? You've been advocating for your friend, Ernest Williams. And you went on a national show and the bloggers are now talking about it and know who you are and they're going to dig even more into your background but what is your end game with this sis like where do you go from here But I will say, I don't think going on Tasha K, you know, she has a huge platform. Don't seem like Tasha K was feeling you either. And feeling this whole story. And she, it didn't, you wasn't pulling no wool over her head, over her eyes. And neither was anybody else. And I think this interview did worse for, I guess you are. His representation now. I think the interview did worse for your client, Coach Sonia. Because what ended up happening was he became angry and his mask slipped. And that's just indelibly all over the internet. Whether people watched it or just listen to it, the foul language, the, you know, the mass slipped. And, um, yeah, I don't think it's doing any good. I don't think his lawyer is going to be pleased with it either. This stuff is out there. I don't, I'm just wondering, how did you think this was going to help him? Because it, it didn't help. Because anything he says or does can be used against him. And it sounds like you might be setting yourself up to be on the witness stand one day. But something tells me you know exactly what you're doing. I just, my gut tells me, and this is just my opinion, that you're playing both sides of the fence. You want us to think that you care so much about Ernesto or Ernest Williams, sorry. But it's really all about you. Dear Sonia, I just hope that you understand the internet is fierce, it's treacherous. Um, people don't look fondly on certain situations. And I just think, this is, these are just my thoughts, that you thought you were going to ride out into the sunset with this man. I remember that phone call, and I need to go back and figure out which one it was. But... My question was, what was supposed to happen with Shirley? What was supposed to happen with Shirley? Was she supposed to just be out the picture? I don't know. But again, my gut tells me this story has multiple layers that haven't even been uncovered. Well, Sonia, I hope you continue to heal. And just know... We'll all be listening to the calls. 
not only Tasha K, her team, and many others. Because this story is just getting started. And I just truly believe that you wanted to slant the public opinion one way, but I think it backfired. I think you need to let the lawyers do their job. And yeah, I think you need to let the lawyers do their job. Regards, Sonia. <laughs>